Good morning. How's everybody doing? Well, I am out of town. So obviously I've got a crazy background going on here. White bed post in a white bedroom and a condo. <clears throat> but we had a fun little pickleball event. Juice Plus event down here at the beach yesterday. And um, so glad you guys are here. This is, um, as we wake up, kind of the algorithms. Hope y'all can see me okay and hear me okay. Good, good thumbs up for um, audio and video working. I'm using the AirPods today because we got background noise. So just some affirmation that um, video and audio is okay would be great. Um, yo, our company is doing so good right now. We've got our, our recruiting's up 27%, just some amazing stats. Our Tuesday and Thursday night, um, income with impact calls are doing great. Wendy Campbell did an amazing wow. I was in the Y sharing our product last night. It's just, we're on fire heading into India with a new product. So it's, it's really good. But today is a time. For me to cast into you guys some timeless principles that are so good and this was supposed to be the special training call last month and i don't know if you remember <clears throat> but i got trapped in memphis where we didn't have internet that worked at a hotel and it never got redone and um so i'm super pumped about how, sharing this principle of rest versus work with you guys today you know, it is one of the four core principles of our Juice Plus journey of inspiring healthy living around the world, and that is rest. So take 30 seconds here, and I want you to type in the name of somebody else that you know that needs to better understand the principle of rest versus work. Maybe a colleague, a friend, a family member who doesn't sleep well. Um, they're a part of that sleep deprived society that we live in. I mean, there's so many, I don't even know what the stats are, but I bet it's more than 50% of the population has some form of sleep deprivation. And, um, when you don't sleep, you don't feel well, you're not productive, you're not rested to be on task for what you're called to do. And it's the time when most people get sick is when they're not rested. So we're going to dive in here. All right. So right now, put in some names of people that you want to watch it with you live right now. They can, you can grab them and they can jump in and also put some names of people in the chat right now that, you know, could watch it later. Maybe they didn't sleep good and they're catching up on sleep right now. I don't know, but let's dive in and let's look at, um, let's look at two approaches to rest and work. I think God had a plan for us for how we should rest and how we should work. And then I think there's the world's view of rest and work. Let's look at the world's view first. Okay. So let's dive in here and let's look at what does the world say about rest versus work? Because we certainly get tied up in a <clears throat> rat race mentality if we don't take charge of our lives you know one of the things we've been talking about and we'll dig in a little deeper is seizing that morning time that quiet start in the mornings helps so much with rest versus work but what the world kind of tells us to do and what our natural reaction is just kind of like we've talked a lot about our natural reaction is to procrastinate and it really fits here we procrastinate rest until we you know until it becomes urgent <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well, how many of you plan your rest? Probably not very many because here's what, here's what I think is, you're going to see is that most of us in the world today, here's a couple of things that happen. Okay. We're either going to work so hard, like literally, work ourselves to the bones where we have to rest so you work so hard no matter what you do some jobs are more mentally exhausting some jobs you're on your feet some jobs there's manual labor where you're just surely exhausted and you have no choice but you run wide open 
until you have to rest. Okay. Now, then there's another example of maybe the student, maybe they cram, maybe you're studying, you're in a place of learning. Maybe it's a new job, new product, new training, and you're cramming to learn and you cram so hard that you crash. No choice. Maybe it's your career and you're in your life. Maybe it's a snapshot of your life. This is what burdens me so much to see a life wasted, to see a life so invested in the creation of a paycheck and the destination of retirement that 30 to 40 years of a life is wasted. And then they have the boat and the toys and the resources to go do things by themselves. And their kids are off with their, with their grandkids doing their own thing. So maybe you push your career to that point. That's why I wrote my book, Make a Life, Not Just a Living. It is on Audible now if you want to get it. Somebody, two people yesterday said they just downloaded the audio version. And then here's another thought process for you. Do you work so hard during the week just to have a weekend? Do you press so hard to exhaustion? So my question for you is, and a, and a thought for you is, is there a better way to approach rest versus work versus cramming versus a career to retirement or versus the week to the weekend? Is there a better way to do this? Is there a better um, handle to put on this? And in our company, as we developed our four core principles, you're going to see this in a minute. We made rest one of those because it's so, so, so important. And there has to be a better way, a newer way. But my question is, is from the seasons of life, from the seasons that pass us by, can we learn some lessons? Maybe there's a different pressure on you to work and rest in one season of life than there is the other. And the seasons are going to pass you by. But let's, let's don't just take the world's perspective. One of the things that I do and this is not a lesson in religiosity or faith or um, or evang an evangelism message. I want to give you some timeless principles that work. You know, one of the things, no matter where, the, where you are on your faith journey, one of the things I try and wake up every day and do is I try really hard to wake up and just acknowledge one thing, and that is that God is the creator which put things into perspective. He's the one who made it all. He's the creator. So he has a pretty good grasp on how things are supposed to work, right? Um, and then I am the created. So I'm the created that lives in the world that the creator made. So it'd be a pretty good, pretty good um, plan for me to grasp his understanding of what he made. So what does God say? about rest versus work? Is there a message that we need to grab a hold of? Um, and you'll see in a minute, it's a great book that I read called Making Room for Life. But God, but that a lot of that book came from principles in God's word. And one of them is this, and it was my mom's favorite part of scripture, John 15. But um, it was about abiding. It was about um, the branches, a, a study of the vine. You look at a vine and it's got, <clears throat> um, it looks like a single plant or a, that fruit, that grape on the end of the, of the string looks like it's you know out there by itself, but it's all connected to the branch, to the vine, to that base but it's all connected to the source. It's all connected back to the root, to the where all the nourishment's coming from, from the soil and, and the, and the um, leaves of that plant. So there's a really good uh, analogy, or I guess, I think maybe a diagram for you to remember. When you study baseball or you think about baseball, you think of that baseball diamond where you're batting at home plate. You got first, second, third, you get to home, you score a run as a pitcher's mound. 
catchers behind the plate. You've got that, you've got that diagram figured out. And I want you to lock in on this diagram for rest versus work. And we're going to start out teaching it from that principle of where you get the most rest is when you're abiding, you're, you're connected to the vine, you're connected to the nutrients, the water, the photosynthesis, if you know anything about science, that the plants go through, through the sun coming into the leaves. When you abide well, then you bear fruit well. But there has to be a season in that where that pendulum is swinging towards abiding for you to get rest, restored, replenished, for you to, for you to abide well. Okay? We're, we're, we're getting somewhere, so hang with me here just a minute. As you abide and as you begin to bear fruit, fruit, think about instead of working until you have to rest. If you're going to abide to bear more fruit, think about what if you rested so that you could work better? You abide to bear more fruit. What if you rested? Yes, intentionally, not out of collapse. What if you rested? planned it, make sure that it happened, made it a priority, not give it just leftover hours of the day. What if we rested in order to work better? One of the four core principles in this Juice Plus business that we teach, it's not just to take a fruit and veggie cap every day. There is a life that must be lived in order to maximize that inspired, healthier life. We got to bridge the gap between what with our juice plus capsules and um, but there are other things and we're focusing on rest water intake exercise whole food diet those are all important components but what if you rested in order to work better okay let's change our pendulum and let's change it from abide and bearing fruit to looking at rest versus work we have, that pendulum is going to swing back and forth. The more you get rest, then it swings back. The more, the more output you get out of your work. Now, this is going to freak you out a little bit because burnout is real. So if you work to an extreme and stay on that side of the pendulum and neglect rest and neglect rest and neglect rest, you either burn out you get sick because your body can't function well with a weak immune system. But there's another extreme to that too is, so anything taken to extreme ends up being bad, but the extreme of this is you take rest to an extreme and it turns into laziness. And Proverbs is so good. The book, if you want, Proverbs is so good talking about the lazy and the diligent the wise and the fool. Just go, just go check out some of that just for a moment. So let's, let's look at one step further here. So what you want to do is you want rest to be the catalyst for you to work, not work from your, you want to work from your rest, not rest from your work. I may, may say that, say that again. That's a, that's a tongue twister. Let rest be the catalyst. What is a catalyst? Something that starts, something that causes something to happen. In chemistry, the catalyst is the agent or what you add to one mixture to make something happen. <clears throat> Second, the thought is here is to work from your rest, not rest from your work. If you rest from your work, you're putting work first and then rest is left over. You want to rest first. So that your work is more productive than ever. Okay. I mean, think about these college football teams that like, I know Georgia started spring practice this week, you know, and they're working hard. They're lifting weights. They're running. They're on the field. They're <coughs> doing, they're studying plays. There's a lot going on, but rest is part of their formula. It's not just see if you can get some sleep. No, you have to have enough rest so you can get up and do it the next day. Okay. All right, here we go. Stay with me here. We're moving and grooving, okay? So what I want you to see is, next is, 
how do you rest better? What does that look like for you? So maybe like, let's say you're, you're admitting to me right now that you don't rest well. How many would you say um, you're in a season of life where rest is not a priority and you're not resting well right now? Maybe give me a, a sleepy emoji in the, um, in the comments or if you can find it. I'll tell you a trick. If you're on a Mac, you're ever looking to find emojis, you know, if you hit control command space, your emoji menu will pop up. Little tip for you there. Okay, so here, here's how I learned, I think, way back when the first began to learn to rest better. I actually taught this at our church several times. It's not a new book, but whether you do Audible or do the, the uh, written version, this is a one of those books everybody needs to read. And in their lifetime, everybody needs to read this book, Making Room for Life by Randy Frazee. Grab it. It will help you understand God's plan for sleep, rest, work. It's almost, it's taking the Hebrew calendar and showing you how God intended for people to rest and work. I'm not going to get into that. It's a whole other training. Maybe we can do a book club, book club on that one day. But um, it's a white book with purple writing on the cover. Great book. I would, if you have a list of books you want to pay your kids to read before they leave home, that'd be a good one. Okay. All right. So here's the four things we teach in our business, and that is relaxation, sleep, hydration, and fitness. Okay. Um, nutrition, sleep, hydration, and fitness. I thought we were using relaxation as our rest there. So nutrition, sleep, hydration, and fitness. Okay. And all four of those are critical. It's not like you can do two and not the other two. You need to do all of them. And everybody, the exercise is going to be different for each of us, but it's basically a minimum of 30 minutes, five days a week. Could be walking, could be playing pickleball, could be running, could be yoga. I don't know. Maybe you like to ride a bike, swim, whatever. Water, whatever you need to do to get half your body weight in ounces every day is a good way, is, is whatever works for you. Sleep is what we're talking about. And nutrition is that whole food diet that just plus bridges the gap. Okay. So we, we were, we were over here just a minute ago talking about abiding and bearing fruit. There's some stages in there of that happen between the abiding and bearing fruit and it's pruning and growing. I know. I, I, sorry, we got a dog barking in the background. I know that um, pruning can seem painful, but if you've got overgrown bushes or a vine, if you, if you, if any of you ever had a vineyard, I know Bob and Deanna Christopherson had a beautiful vineyard in Northern California. Uh, raise your hand if you ever heard of vineyard. Comment in here and talk about the principle of pruning here. It's so critical. And I know that like during COVID and there's some, I've been, I've been doing this 36 years. We've had seasons where we've lost some people. Some people have moved on to do other things. It's normal. Sometimes that pruning gives an opportunity. You wouldn't believe. I've seen people step down. Uh, several of them. This is so funny. You, you know, people have this, I don't know what you call it. People have this idea in their heads that they see this green grass over there across the road, other side of the fence, and they don't feel like their grass is so green right now. And they're just, they're cutting their grass and they're not happy. Well, they switch gears and maybe they decide they want to go and find a company that cures toe fungus or um, it's like this brown liquid on a spoon that makes you lose weight or whatever. Okay. I'm just, there's, there's, there's so many things out there. Most of them are gone within 18 months. And a lot of them that popped up during COVID are just dying and struggling right now. But what's very interesting, no matter what it is, is when people go and do something else, maybe it's Uber driving or dog sitting or, online marketing or video production and they want to start their own little business at home one of the things when you leave one to go to another people don't realize that when you see greener grass that you still have to have a lawnmower and you still have to cut it over there too 
So a lot of times it's the lazy looking for a way to create income without working. And a lot of times, maybe they're not willing to rest. That's what we're talking about right here. So sometimes that pruning, although it's painful, I saw during COVID, and I use that example of the you know, brown liquid on a spoon to help people lose weight. I'm not even going to name names of companies, but I saw so many of some of them, some leaders left. And we're going to go over there and they figured out they had to cut the grass and bring their mower to most of them quit. But what it did was that space, when you prune that branch and it gives an opportunity for air, sun and water to get to a branch that was covered up before, all of a sudden the covered up branch springs to massive production and leadership potential. They just were shaded, sheltered in a place where they couldn't thrive before. So don't, um, pruning can create amazing growth. So just think about that as you rest to work. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. Um, <clears throat> maybe you take a picture of this slide. Maybe even, I don't know if Trey's with us still, I think he is. Maybe Trey can screenshot this, what's on here right now. And he could um, give you that image so you could think about it. Um, let me see if I can just let me do one thing real quick here. All right, so let me read these to you guys. So I want you to rate your rest, okay? And normally we do, you know, one to five, one to 10, but we did one to four, where one is, mm, it ain't so good. And four is like, I got this. I'm a pro at this, okay? So, if you were to look at your rest in your life right now, daily, okay, um, how are you doing on getting rest? Quiet start, scripture, prayer, meditation. And dude, I'm gonna add one. And I, I love this image that Trey put up there. But how many of you just, yes, raise your hands like big time right now. How many of you like a little nap every once in a while? Does anybody, just get huge benefit out of naps. So there's some nappers in the audience right here. Any, is there, are there any nappers? Nobody takes naps. Oh yeah, 12, one, two, two, 12, 22. Um, all right, if you take naps, like I can tell you this, whenever I have a Zoom call or an event that's like eight o'clock or later at night, it's usually, I mean, honestly, if I divulge my secrets and become transparent, I'm like a nine o'clock go to bed, 4 a.m. get up. You know, sometimes it's 10, but my goal is right around nine, I go to bed, but I get up at four. You can, I mean, I'll do, I can do stuff after nine. I'm not at my highest, most functional time of day, but you get me at like 4.30 after my first cup of coffee, that's the best time for me to like go run a marathon with you. That's just, that may sound crazy, but I'm up and going. So. What is your daily, rate your daily rest, rate your weekly rest. Can you rate your weekly rest? Your Sabbath once a week. Are you, are you good about taking that day of rest? Um, do you have some office hours? I mean, I know in our business, we're not really office hours because we teach you to go out and do life and take Juice Plus with you, not try and set office hours. But do you have, you know, once you get in with your family, do you take, if even if you've got an evening Zoom call or whatever, do you have some boundaries where you don't let work interfere and you focus on family time? Limits to screen time. Now, I think that's as big with adults as it is with kids. I mean, what happens is, I mean, I see these people get on Instagram and they start, they get sidetracked. Not only are they looking and wasting time and getting blue light on their brain, but they have gone on these shopping sprees because Instagram knows what you might spend money on. It's like tracking your brain thoughts and if you've looked at a pair of pants, a pocketbook, or a pair of running shoes more than once, when you're streaming Instagram, you're going to see those shoes a hundred times. So they know how to make you spend money too. So not only is it a screen time thing for waste of time, but it's a money thing too. Uh, monthly, intentional days off. Do you do date nights? Do you do one-on-ones? Do you do stuff with your grandkids? I mean, there's so many. There's so, so many options. And then yearly, you plan some vacations. Do you plan personal retreats? Do you have some time just with you? Do you like 
take the seasons of the year and plan some vacations. I just, I had to go off there for a minute. Didn't mean to get sidetracked, but um, look at that. I talked long enough and Trey's magic just boom. The rest evaluator is there. He's got you an image. So you can take it, you can share it. Um, you can modify it too if you want to, but just rate your rest. Do that and take some time and do that, okay? All right, here we go. We're, we're gonna, we gotta move. We're, we're getting, I'm getting hung up in the weeds. So we got our finish strong coming up and, we're, and this, these last parts are gonna move fast. So can, will you all commit to me? Here we go, is we're gonna finish rest versus work. I wanna finish where we, where we started. I wanna leave you in a good place. Would you all please try for a month? Set some kind of alarm. You know, if I follow, you know, this is crazy. But one of the ways I help, if I have a new habit or something new that I want to do on a routine, regular basis, you know, it, I, there used to be all kinds of ways, but I just tell Siri or, you know, somebody, I just say, remind me to do this every day at 6 a.m. And by the time for 30 days, I get that reminder for 6 a.m., I pretty well got, got to have it. So how many of you would commit to when you plan your week, how many, of you, just quick, how many of you actually take some time and sit down and plan your week? We've talked about it. And I think Sunday nights is the best. You can do it Monday morning. The only, the only benefit in doing it Sunday night over Monday morning is you sleep better Sunday night. 100% guarantee you sleep better Sunday night if you've already planned your week. If your week is still in chaos and you're worried about it, thinking about it, you will not sleep as well. Ah, somebody uses their tower. They've got their alarm on. They've got their lights on their tower garden coming on as a reminder for something. Okay. So, um, how many of you would do that when you plan your week, plan your rest? Like, just think about this. If you have a late ball game for a grandchild that's at eight o'clock, because these, these kids are doing ball games so late now because there's not enough field time. I mean, I've got a six-year-old grandson that has 8.30 at night baseball games. Is that not crazy? So I go to, let's just say I go to that baseball game at 8.30. It's over at 9.45, 10 o'clock. And I got to drive 45 minutes back to my house. So I know it's going to be, it'll be 11 before I get in bed. So I don't want any, I, I don't want anything scheduled that would push, that would eliminate my quiet time. I exercise the next morning. I still want to get my six to seven hours of sleep, you know, so I plan that. Or maybe I plan a nap the next day. Or when you've got a late night Zoom call, do you put a nap in there? Wh whatever you need to do, plan your rest. I want you to think about the next 30 days, planning your rest. And um, when we do our special training next month, I might ask you how well you're doing on that, okay? All right, let's keep moving fast because I'm, I'm, I'm talking too long here. Um, it's not advancing. There we go. All right, so wake up. Oh, I did I advance two in a row. Wake up with Kurt if you want that weekly text. Ours was really good this week. Um, I would love for you guys to just subscribe to that. It's not going to bombard your life, bother you every day. Uh, just Monday mornings, kick off your week. Share it with your teams if you want them to get that message. I just really want to help people plan and activate their week. Um we sent postcards out in January. I know it's, I know the year is well underway and daylight savings time just ended. So Kurt, stop talking about the beginning of the year. It's a resource. Makealife.com slash 2024. We sent postcards out to let you know we wanted to help you make this year amazing. Well, you can book a calendar event. You can book a team call, book a coaching call. Um, we've got resources there that are unbelievable. Memory jogger, all kind of stuff. So go to makealife.com slash 2024. I want to tell you that. Uh, another billboard. Uh, our book is now on Audible. And no, I did not read it. I have undiagnosed ADD, and I could not sit still that long, I don't think. But we had an amazing professional voice to it. It turned out great. And um, I want you to, um, if you want, if you're not one of those that sits and reads a book, go grab it on Audible. We are in the middle right now of one of the biggest opportunities just like to get started our company's ever done it's ten dollars to sign up as a partner instead of 52 and you'll you know when you make partners because your family's get product it's not just you it's a couple more orders and some complete and you've made partner plus you're going to get a check for 190 dollars back 
just on you hitting partner plus between title reward, sales profit, um, you're going to get, and you're going to get $190 back. And then you're also going to get a hundred dollars of free product. So it's a cool time to sign up, get somebody on a Tuesday or Thursday night call. And I'll show you that in just a second. We'll, and, and you'll see how you can go ahead and get them to sign up. This is, your, these are calendar things, Blue Ridge Bootcamp. It will sell out. It has for, I don't know, 20 straight years. <clears throat> Tickets are going to go on sale right after Indy, and we're going to do something special for you this year. You may want to go. It, it, it won't last long because there are only going to be so many of the um, these opportunities. But tell your people, if they go in and sign up for Blue Ridge when we launch, I think it's going to be on April the 9th. That's the Tuesday after Indy. Um if you sign up for Blue Ridge, you'll be able to do it in four installments, four payments. So it won't bust your budget instead of having to pay the 200 and something dollars for the weekend. And it is, it's an amazing, just the food's worth what you're paying. Um, but if you get your people ready, they can maybe get one of those spots for uh, making four equal payments instead of one payment to sign up for the Juice Plus Blue Ridge Bootcamp. Okay. Stay tuned for that. If you go to Blue Ridge Bootcamp.com right now, Trey, can you confirm this? Well, can they still go in there and add their name to the email list? I think they can. Um, if not, if you go there and you can't, just add in the comments. Please send me the link to be on the Blue Ridge Bootcamp email list and we'll send it to you. All right. Worship gathering. I think we got a few more seats. Beth keeps like we keep adding seats and rearranging the room. It's not a big room. If you're coming to Indy, it's a leadership only conference. So it's a smaller conference. Prayer breakfast room is smaller and it's getting close to uh, capacity. So go grab your ticket. Ike Reigert, who was spent the first half of his life with Zig Ziglar, the middle part of his career with as a partner with John Maxwell. And now he's a pastor. He's awesome. And Stacy Marie Walker, she has that voice that you want to make sure you bring plastic stemware with you, not glass, because it might shatter uh, in your hand. Her voice is so amazing. So I can't wait for Stacy to join us. And we're in the middle of our last jump start. Get with your upline NMD. If you wanted to do a shreg with us, you wanted to do a jump start with us, we're in the middle of the last one. It's almost over. And so um, make sure you jump in and um, find out about that, because we'll still be doing jump starts. It won't just be like a global company theme for the month, but we're always using our shred 10 to help people jumpstart their health. Here's what I was wanting to show you when we were talking about um, getting people to take advantage of the $10 situation. This is our, these are our brand new. They're not going to stop. We're committed to creating this rhythm for you. I used to have to drive across town and find a conference room where, where they were doing it on a whiteboard now we're doing it on Zoom for you. It's a 20 to 30 minute presentation of our company, product, and business model. And then we give your prospect that's listening all the information they need. And then we give them four or five options, how they can get started. And they just call you back on the phone and tell you which option is best for them. And you get them signed up. So when you bring somebody to the table, we're doing the closing for you. Okay. So every Tuesday and Thursday evening, and maybe we can, um, maybe there's some magic still left in Trey, and there's a way to send a link to that image too. I know it's on, um, I've got it in my photos save on my phone so I can share it. Maybe that schedule, it's every Tuesday and Thursday, and then every Wednesday we have Wellness Wednesdays. I mean, here's one right here, March 28th. Jeff Roberti and Dr. Mitra Ray are doing this income with impact business opportunity meeting call for you. Tomorrow night, it's Sharon Rankin, the first national marketing director in our company with Dr. Candace Corson, premier medical doctor that uses our product with all of her patients. She's unbelievable. She's built an incredible business. The two of them will be on tomorrow night. So don't miss that, okay? Uh, all of our calendar of events is, is online too. Um, there's Jumpstart. There's everything through the end of March. You can get to that calendar uh, by going to makealife.com slash calendar. I believe that's where that lands. And then um, almost done. Two more slides. 
Uh, this is the finished draw. This is our call to end the month of March. It's going to be on March 27th. And we're not just like this flyer we just looked at. We said, don't leave March to luck. Luck is, is for the lottery. We're going to roll our sleeves up and we're going to show you what hard work does to end the month. We're going to use urgency to destroy procrastination. And by the way, I'm going to be doing the Campbell team call on April the 1st, just a really few days after that. And it's going to be about urgency destroying procrastination on Monday night, April the 1st. And um, actually, the evening of that finished strong call, I'll be doing our monthly men's call. And it's something I'm super excited about. It's the return of the entrepreneur. Isolation took the wind out of the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur is back. Business is booming. Where our leadership and economy has companies having labor problems and their layoffs, we're creating an opportunity. We were, our industry was the industry that was designed to be home-based. Companies have faked home-based positions with zero accountability. They're getting about 30% of the productivity they used to get. So zero accountability for these companies that have put salary jobs in their homes and it's not working. So the RTW, return to work or RTO, return to office is happening. And people are looking, they got a taste of what it's like to have a home-based business, even though it was kind of fake. Their position was made to work at home during COVID and they stretched it out. Isolation's killing things. They need teams, community. You see, we have events that make our community stay alive. Okay. So anyway, that call is going to be great. And then um, you go to makealife.com slash calendars. Got all our stuff there. If you want to find out about it, I'm committed to helping you build a rhythm into your business because God gave Lori and I this business. Number one, first, so she could stay at home, $1,000 a month. We needed to do that. Then once we did that, we did it our first month, by the way, we got 38 customers. We did that, and then we believed we could do more. And we said, this could be a business that could change our family for generations to come. And we became national marketing directors in eight months. Got the benefit package, got the up to $3,000 per month expense allowance, got tuition reimbursement plan for our kids for college get a holiday bonus every year. And that little bitty $52 investment, which is only $10 right now, allowed us to build a business in all 50 states and over 20 countries around the world. You can do that too. But the key is, if you're not rested well, you're not gonna work well at doing anything. So don't forget, for the next 30 days, you're gonna focus on planning your rest so that your work is supercharged. Have an awesome day, okay? See ya.